know, we hear a lot in the U.S. about U.S. energy independence, but the real way to look at it is North American energy security and working together as a North American energy system. We're going from supplying 10 to 12 percent of the world's oil to maybe 20 percent, and that's huge. And we, we, can, we need to make sure we talk about integration, uh, but also one thing we're not talking a lot about, but which um, Israel alluded to, is national security. And the reason why I say that is because as a North American continent, we can improve global geopolitical security. We can have an influence over what happens geopolitically by putting these supplies into the global market. Our political leaders, top, top leadership, met in February in Toluca, and they committed to, quote, opening a new chapter in our partnership, and they recognized energy as a trilateral priority. As sustained leadership from the highest political levels in our governments is essential top-down drive to propel the trilateral agenda forward. In order to, to discuss policies that coordinate or integrate North America region, I think first we have to bear in mind was uh, the change of policies in Mexico. Mexico had, had the highest production rate in 2004, but due to the lack of investment technology and the legal framework that forbids private investment, we have to import. But since President Peña Nieto took office, and what has been happening is a game changer. The reforms being implemented as we speak in Mexico will result in a more open market for companies to do business in a manner more similar to how they operate in Canada and, Mex and the United States today. The expectation is that we will lower our prices on electricity and gas to creation of jobs, 2.5 million jobs on 2025. Another expectation is the increase on production on oil for 3.5 million barrels per day in 2025. But our main challenge will be the execution of such legislation. I, I see three ambiguities uh, or uncertainties. The first one is the new relationship between uh, government and firms, either private or public firms, in the energy sector and especially in the hydrocarbon sector. The second one is the fiscal regime. Uh, uh, as you know, uh, there's a new uh, uh, fiscal um, constraints for operating the country. And the third one is the evolution of prices. Well, even though all valuations have been opened to competition and to private participation, participation, the hydrocarbon upstream sector, which means exploration and, um, and production, will remain under the control of the state under that strategic category. And the issue of time is important here. I'll give you a, a reference. Legal reform in Colombia was in 2003, and production began in earnest in 2008. It, the scope of that reform was much less than in Mexico. And it took five years from the moment they said, we're opening to the actual uh, opening and increasing in uh, actual investment in the sector and, and growing. Uh, when uh, can we expect investment to materialize and, and production to start coming out of uh, private investment in the oil sector? Round zero, why is it important? And when, when is the due date? September 16. Pemex submitted his petition, and after his petition, the Minister of Energy will consider the allocation exploration area and the field production area through leases. But after that, we'll have, we expect the bidding round to start on June 15, June 15. The legal framework is not approved, not only to design the contracts, but how it's going to be up the, the operation of the, of, the, of the process, of the bidding process. Canada is now over 33 percent. We're now over a third of U.S. oil imports. So while you watch the statistic for oil imports to the U.S. have declined from a high of about 65 percent now into the low 40s and heading down, trending lower, what's significant is that we now, Canada now, represent certainly as much as all the OPEC nations. So it's a, it's, it's a massive story. So of course that involves the whole question of infrastructure and how we serve those markets. We share landmass, rivers, lakes, and air sheds, which automatically makes us part of the same continent, part of the same issue. 
Secondly, many of our geological basins cross boundaries. The Eagle Ford into Mexico, the Williston Basin spans the national border between Canada and the United States. But perhaps the strongest reason is economic. The continent generates 30% of the world's goods and services. And lastly, I think the reason is most important is that the situation is so fluid and changing so rapidly. So that's the very best reason for talking to each other, and I think the trilateral agenda is the perfect place.